by 1933, it was 1 to 19 or 20. By 1960, it was 1 to 30. By now, it's about 1 to 50, uh, 100 and something. So it, it is increasing. The gap between us and the Western world is increasing. Uh, we are getting poorer, they are getting wealthier. It's part of what you see. And this is also what translates in us here in, uh, in, um, uh, between uh, Nigerians, wealthy people, and, and uh, the poor people. The, the, the gap between their wealthy and our, and our poor is, has increased. By the wealthy, you, you mean the wealthy in Nigeria yes. and the poor in Nigeria? And the wealthy in Nigeria and the poor in Nigeria has increased tremendously. So the issues are these. First, uh, there is the issue of uh, ethnicity. That is between uh, House of Lani and others, especially during the 2003 when Buhari contested, it was he, he, he depended on three things. One, it took between House of Lani and Yoruba, then Obasanjo. Two, uh, in 2011, between House of Lani himself and uh, Gulok Jonathan. In 2007, when he contested against Umari Aradua, he lost Kazina State, he lost uh, Kaduna State, he lost KB State. So then, now, uh, You're talking is, about Buhari, right? That is, I'm talking about Buhari. Yeah. So there, there was ethnicity, region, and, 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 and religion. Then noun is class between the rich and the poor. Buhari wants to claim, you know, he is of the poor background, that he is rep representing the poor. Whether that is true or not, you know, is to be debated because I uh, personally I would not agree to, uh, to that. But this is what he is throwing into the public, and this is what most of the uh, people, especially in northern Nigeria, are tending to believe. Now, when you see two very highly popular candidates uh, at the polls like this, some people will say that it might prove a challenge. I mean, it means that the electoral umpire must be on point. Every attention must be paid to every little detail. Otherwise, each party could be accusing the umpire of bias. How, what challenges do you see for INEC, and how would you suggest that INEC combats uh, the situation? INEC has done tremendously okay. From what INEC uh, has uh, demonstrated, they are ready for the election. The only, as the only group that I think is not ready for the election is, this, is our security. I don't see our security getting ready for, the, uh, ready for this election. Not because they have not, uh, they have not, uh, not because they have not prepared. They are trying to prepare, but they are doing it in the wrong way. Mm. How, how, why do you say so? Okay, now, <clears throat> uh, election is a civic uh, uh, exercise. Mm -hmm. And as a civic exercise, we expect uh, civic security uh, architecture be established. But what we are saying, what we are seeing is a military, it's, it's a militarized uh, uh, security architecture. The police, I have not seen the police demonstrating buttons, I have not seen them demonstrating uh, uh, tear gas, I have not seen them demonstrating uh, uh, water, water, what do you, water cannons, mm -hmm. I have not seen them demonstrating you know, with you know, PPS police uh, protective shields. You know, what I see them having is AK-47. And on top of that, we also hear about uh, the military talking of, uh, of uh, Operation Python Dance. In a civic issue, in a civic exercise, mm -hmm. you are demilitarizing it against a civilian population that the only thing they have is their PVC. Mm -hmm. So the security, the security architecture established is actually uh, intimidating people, getting them to fear rather than giving them confidence. Now, over time, we have seen criticisms of the security agencies, and oftentimes the response is that we are trying to secure those who will come out to vote. They say that those who will come out to vote, they don't want them, they would have nothing to fear. It is those who perpetrate, who want to perpetrate violence, who complain about the security architecture. Um, would you say, from our history, in terms of what you have seen, the role of security agencies to be, uh, we've seen them in previous, this complaint 
point you're making, I mean, has been, has trailed almost every election. We've seen in times past police deploying 30,000 people to just one state for elections. Uh, we've also seen the army being deployed as well. So we've seen this kind of criticism. But if you assess their role from history, would you say that they have done re really okay or that the fears are not founded? <laughs> you see, I take it, yes, it is the responsibility of government to ensure that the election is done in a peaceful and uh, secure environment, mm -hmm. certainly. But it must not be done under an uh, uh, environment of fear and intimidation. Do you see that coming up? I, yeah, that is, that is it. Because when you, you talk about Operation Python Dance, when you see a policeman holding uh, an AK-47 instead of holding a baton, if at the election maybe something happened and he is confronted, what weapon is he going to use to, to defend himself? Mm -hmm. He's going to use the weapon that he has, which is AK-47. And when you use AK-47, mm -hmm. the result will be, cut, uh, will, be, uh, will be deadly. You belong to a think tank. You know that elections in Nigeria could be prone to violence because of the interest of you know, party actors to want to capture state power by all means. And sometimes this means includes violence. It might not be by the party in power. It might also be by, you know, opposition elements who also might have their own people, you know, who are working for them. Uh, how would you say that we, we, we demilitarize our elections, especially on the side of those who intend to, you know, provoke violence during elections? It is the responsibility of government to ensure that people change their orientation. It is the responsibility of government to orient Nigerians, to orient the people <clears throat> to believe that election is a civil matter and it, must, it can be done actually in a civilized and, and peaceful manner. It is the responsibility of government to ensure that uh, to, people do not see having government at all costs as a means of, uh, of, uh, as means of controlling uh, uh, state resources to make them, uh, uh, to bring power, in, I mean to bring resources into the hands of the people in such a manner and in such a way that it is all and all. And it is because of this that government, uh, uh, people, politicians go out of their way to do everything uh, in order to take over power. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that. So it is government responsibility to more opinion to uh, 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 orient Nigerians, to make them feel that, we, they, to, to make Nigerians civilized. Mm -hmm. Why are we not seeing this in the Western world? Majority, Why are we not seeing it in other parts of the world? Majority of people is it that, are, argue, sir, sorry to interrupt you, that Nigerians themselves will be civilized. The ordinary voter who just wants to go to the polls and vote will be civilized. They want the, man, they want the elections to be conducted in a very civil manner. I, I think if you take a poll of majority of Nigerians, they want the elections to be violence-free. But then we know that not everybody comes to the elections with an innocent mind. How would you, you know, ensure that, or how does government ensure that these people who come to the polls, perhaps sometimes armed themselves, you know, come to meet security agencies that have no arms? I mean, so, so, how do we so, justify so, so, that? So that tells, that tells you that it is only a minute number that are willing are, are ready to cause trouble. So if it is a minute number that are willing and ready to cause trouble, then government can contain that in such a way that the majority will feel secure. And besides, who are those that will do? Is it the contestant or is it the supporter? So it is the, it, the whole thing is endemic. When we turn elections as a matter of life and death, when we turn government as a matter of love and death, everybody is depending on government for his livelihood. Then, of course, you will expect this. But if government is for the service of the people, and you go there in order to serve the Nigerian people, then you will not turn into these kind of things. I'm going to ask you to hold your thoughts for us. We have to take a moment on this program. We'll be back in just a moment. Please stay with us.